T.O. Blaze. Hey there, this is T.O. bringing you the third part of my life support series. And this is where the series starts to get a little hairy. So, as I mentioned, I, I only have the footage that I have. So, unfortunately, I don't have a build of this Mun base. But I do have some footage of things going awry. So, I planned all my resources as best I could, with the exception of electric charge. So, the science, the... um. The research module, I'm forgetting the name of it now, but the one that you load scientists in that you can conduct science experiments for more science points. It drains electric charge pretty quickly. There you saw my, my power was dropping. So um, I think I was actually controlling another vehicle when I got a notification that my resources were running low. And I was like, wait a second, that shouldn't ha that sh should not be the case. And then I realized, yep, so long as I'm conducting research with that module, the power consumption spikes. So here you see I'm, I'm adding up all the power requirements for all. There you see the mobile processing lab. I forgot the word the name for it. I'm trying to figure out exactly how much consumption that I have at rest. And then I'm obviously factoring in with the mobile processing lab being active. And then I'm taking all that information, comparing it to the batteries and the solar panels and the daylight cycle, the night day cycle with the moon. Trying to figure out how much more power I need to add. Trying to be relatively accurate with this, just for funsies. And um, there you see I'm looking for power consumption on the life support modules. And yeah, trying to trying to crunch numbers because I'm going to design a little resupply mission. And um, I'm going to test a few options. I'm thinking, first of all, let's... Let's use some typical power generation options when there is no sunlight. So that's going to be fuel cells. That would require me to attach probably some smaller fuel tanks and some fuel cells, which I can I can manage all of that with some engineers and the EVA um, construction mode, which was a godsend. That was probably one of the best features they've ever added to KSP1, to be honest. So uh, here you can watch me. Do a little test run on the uh, on the runway, and um, I do it a couple times. I'm looking for power consumption. I've got the I'm gonna toggle those fuel cells on and off, load up some experiments so that I can turn their mobile processing lab on. And this is in broad daylight, uh, but there are no solar panels. So, yeah, my electric charge is dropping. The uh, fuel cells aren't gonna keep up, and that was my suspicion. So uh, this was, I guess, to see what's how how short they were going to fall. I also think I might have had those fuel cells available on the surface of the mine. That might have been why I chose to go with four. So um, I'm going to go ahead and test with the fuel cells on. Fuel cells on, and you can see the liquid fuel and oxidizers draining faster than I would I would like it to. So kind of getting to the point where I'm deciding when there's no sunlight, I'm kind of dead in the water i don't want to go and toggle the mobile processing lab off and on when the sun's out and when the sun goes away so i'm gonna cheat this is science mode cost doesn't matter each of those rtgs is twenty five thousand credits i believe so this is an expensive solution but uh yeah i did the math i know how much power i need let me figure out how many rtgs i need to slap on that thing and send them to the moon so that's the Solution I decided to go with, uh, again, don't want to cycle the mobile processing lab off and on. I figured that would have been the most accurate, uh, efficient solution. So RTGs, it shall be. Uh, I don't know why I'm adding the science experiments. Maybe I forgot to add them to the, um, to the station itself. Um, so, yeah, this is going to be a little resupply refit i guess we'll call it because it's not technically supplies i'm correcting a design flaw in the station itself it's gonna I'm gonna fast forward through the launch of this thing i believe get over to the surface of the mun and get these bad boys installed see how well the station will perform so i went ahead and glanced through some of my footage for the rest of the uh the series and i remember now i am not headed to Duna. I had higher aspirations for this playthrough. So we're going to be going to Eve in future 
videos for this series. I'm not going to the surface of Eve. If I had to guess, I didn't. I did not make it to the surface on this playthrough, uh, but did want to go to Eve. So not going to Duna. That's uh, that's what we're building up towards. Then I'm gonna practice uh, going a little further and further out. So the Mun Station was great practice because when I go to Eve, I'm obviously gonna want to use a mobile processing lab. That's the fun stuff. So now I I know power consumption can be an issue in orbit. Though it's not really an issue because you orbit so quickly. So the batteries really don't have time to drain. The dark side of the moon, on the other hand, stays dark a long time. So there you see I've got my approach. I like to pinpoint landings. I don't use any mods for this, so it's all just trial and error and practice, practice, practice. I get pretty close with some of these landings now. Also, certain celestial bodies, obviously, it's going to make it a little easier to pinpoint the landing if the gravity's not so bad. So... The Mun's a pretty decent example. Gravity's not really that high, so I can get pretty close to my target, which is here. So I want to be close enough so that my engineer can do EVA construction without having to, to go back and forth, back and forth between the vehicles. So, yep, I'm close enough. Let me slap on all these RTGs, and we'll give that a whirl. See how well the, uh, the power consumption keeps up with the... Uh, or how well the power... Uh, creation keeps up with consumption, if we want to call it that. Or conversion, I guess. We're not creating power, we're converting something to power. I believe that's one of the uh, laws of something, isn't it? Right? Put it in the comments if you guys know. So, what, what am I doing here? Moving some fuel tanks around? Yeah, I'm going to borrow some fuel from my uh, little lander there, That my refit. Don't need all that fuel, so refill the tanks, putting it back on the station. And now let's let's do a little time warp and see. Can start the fuel cell. Yep, electric charge is building up. So successful refit, and that's going to do the trick. We've got the mobile processing lab is on. It's engaged, and the fuel the the electric charger is keeping up. So go ahead and probably cannibalize a few things. I've got that battery that I borrowed from the uh, rover earlier because it couldn't put it back on the rover. So I'm just going to leave it back on the uh, on the station. Done with the little refit probe. I'm going to go ahead and empty everything out. Maybe leave it there for now. But that's getting to be the end of the video. Got a few more fun missions before we get to EVE. I believe the next one's going to be a construction of the EVE station. Then we're probably going to do a few more things around the moon before our transfer window. So hope you guys are enjoying the series. And I'll see you in another video.